Okay. So we'll uh, study today how TCP works. Okay, and uh, we'll leave it to you to study UDP because UDP is very simple. If you understand TCP, then you can understand. Uh, is very elementary to understand UDP. Possibly the most complex protocol. Of course, IP is also. See, I can say very simple. What we said is simple, but if you consider with IP or routing protocols, uh, you know how routers exchange information like BGP and other protocol, then it becomes little complex. So we have not done that part because it's really complex. And secondly, of course, there are some security issues when the routers exchange information about routes, but. Uh, but you know it will be it will take two three classes to teach you how all these protocols work so possibly had you done networking course we would have possibly uh, taken up those topics but anyway this is a very basic course so we'll skip that however let's <clears throat> so today's talk is about transport layer and next class we'll look at what are the security holes or, or uh, security vulnerabilities in TCP, and then we will study a uh, secure protocol that all of us use today in browser, uh, which is called TLS, or earlier it was called SSL, right? All right, uh, every browser has this feature of TLS. Okay, so the best book to read this, of course, is Kuros and Ross. And of course, uh, I have taken lectures from uh, contents from this lecture as well. So this, these two are lovely places to <coughs> read about TCP. Okay, so the question is that this diagram we have seen, right? And there's an ATM machine. Do you think this has more security or this? Which one? So this two I found, right? So I found which is more secure? Where in first case, Mr. Guard is sleeping. Second case, dogs. Dogs are supposed to protect, right? And they are also sleeping. Second. I'll leave it to you to ask. <laughs> okay. First one. Think about it. Well, depends on what is the threat model. <laughs> okay. So again, we'll repeat internet because this is if you go to interviews and more, you know, most likely something or other uh, would be asked on internet if you attend, you know, interviews of companies like Cisco or Brocade, Juniper, whatever, right? Even Google, right? Because their business is based on internet. Internet is a network of network that we understood, right? I mean, network could is of type, say, LAN, local area network, or it could be any multiple LANs connected with routers and so on, right? And then they are connected through router. At the edge, you can always see a router. And these routers exchange information with each other and find out the routes because IP address is kind of structured address. Okay, uh, IP address of companies in or you in uh, Bangalore would be different from uh, IP address of people in New York or even in different parts of India, right? Okay, based on this hierarchical addressing, uh, you know, packets route because all these routers exchange information because they will decide if the IP address is something, then where to send it to, right? And note that always message travels from one router to another router like here and here to here and to here and so on all right okay and then we have seen ip is connectionless is an unreliable best effort protocol unreliable means that ip simply says that i don't care i mean if packet is if i'm not able to deliver the packet i will drop the packet but I will make my best effort, right? So there may be routers on the way, like here, some routers may be congested. Okay, a lot of traffic is coming in. Then it, then its buffers are full and then packets will be dropped. Addressing we know is a numerical addressing which has some structure. It's not flat. 
If it's a flat addressing, then you can't send. Uh, you, it, the routing is very, very difficult, right? Only in a small domain, like your know, classroom, if uh, your names are unique and there are about 30 students, then you will remember each other's name and you can do uh, routing within yourself, within your classmates, right? If, if imagine uh, even IT Monday must be having 2,000 students, and by first name, you cannot do transfer of uh, information, right? Then you need complete ad address, you know, the, for example, Suryansh is of uh, some hostel and some room and name, room number and hostel, that becomes hierarchical, right? Then you can communicate within each, to each other within the campus, right? All right. So typically routing takes several hops that we have seen and we have seen the packet, there is source ID, destination ID, <coughs> Et cetera, et cetera, right? All right. Now, IP is unreliable. Reliability, see, reliability, it means that if I have a information to send and I put this inside IP packet, it reaches to other end as it is without even a single bit of error. So, whatever you send should reach to other end, right? Okay. On the way, if this packet goes to a router, router should not drop the packet. Okay. Now you imagine you are transferring a file from machine A to machine B. Okay, over internet, then not even a single byte of the file has, can be an error. Otherwise, file will not is unusable, right? Okay, <clears throat> so now IP does not guarantee any of these. <clears throat> now IP packets generally have a small a checksum, an error correcting, error detecting code, right? But these are these are unkeyed. This first thing, no, we don't use symmetric keys kind. And secondly, just single bit of error, a few bits of error, we can find out. That's it. Okay, nothing more than that. Okay, there is no cryptographic MAC. We use MAC for integrity plus authentication. Anybody can make IP packets and with any IP address and send it to other end. Okay, so IP is unreliable and best effort that we know. All right. Okay. Just a minute. Okay, all right. So packets may be lost, packet may be corrupted, packets. So we have seen that in case of IP, packets may be lost on the way or dropped by routers. Packets may get corrupted by routers. I mean, routers are, are in the link over which it goes. There is a possibility that few bits may get flipped. Okay. Or packets may deliver out of order because you know source is sending sequence of packets and packets may take different route. Well, understanding between router changes, so packets may reach uh, at different times, of course, different times, but may take different paths. So, first packet may reach second, and second may packet may reach first, and so on and so forth, right? So, now this can be an issue that how we are you are going to assemble them. Because your file, you know, one after other, if you're taking the content and sending in a packet, they have, it. the file must be reassembled back, right? Now, there must be some way for reassembling back, right? IP does not guarantee any of this, okay? So it is left to higher level protocols to ensure that connection is reliable, if you want reliability. Now, some people may say that most of the time, most of the packets reach uh, in order, right? So if something reaches out of order, you can just drop it. Like in your, for example, you are take, having a streaming protocols, like, you know, you get OTT IPL matches and some packets are dropped in between, doesn't matter really. Although I, nowadays most OTT also use TCP, right? So, so, so we need some way for reliability. A second thing very important is that 
see ip address belongs to what ip address belongs to the machine or interface okay or computer a computer may have is not running a single process right it may be running in hundreds of processes hundreds of processes right process is nothing but programs that are in run right Pro programs that are running for example you can have uh, your when you're streaming data from other end so there is a protocol running right a tcp basically running in some form for your netflix or whatever okay so so now when you receive ip packet this belongs to the interface here or the machine here that's where ip packet will give right then machine how machine can send it to a particular process for example you are streaming at the same time you are uh, reading emails okay or at the same time you are doing file transfers right so multiple packets are coming so some way it should be sent to different up processes you know when different packets come first packet may go to first application second may go to second third packet may go to third and so on or some way how do you know incoming packet is for a particular process any idea about it anyone what do we use for that for port example number. i yeah yeah uh, go ahead port number for the processes yes absolutely like you know for example your ip address is your home address okay and somebody sends something then you know it will reach home but there has to be something to tell that is for your father mother you your sister or somebody else okay similarly here we use something for delivering to different process within a machine okay now let's come to that point which you have just mentioned ip protocols deliver is basically node to node delivery between one machine to another machine okay if there are multiple applications running then packets that that has come has got to go to a appropriate process right because you know this see some application at the other end is also trying to communicate so is trying to communicate to a particular application here or a particular process here the so packet has to be routed to an appropriate one right and similarly you know if there are multiple applications that are sending packets or multiple process sending packet they must also go over the same link all right so there must be some way to tell to other end that which particular process is sending this okay so we call this demultiplexing when a packet comes to a node and it has to be sent to appropriate app uh, app or process this is called demultiplexing multiplexing is then when packets are coming processes that it has got to go in single link so that's called multiplexing and demulti so we use ports and something called sockets right you would have done socket programming okay now when you write a program then you, you you create a socket do the transfer and in order to create a socket you have to use a port number which is free and available okay and then fill the data in and then when the data transfer is over close that uh, socket right so you would have done that right all right so multiplexing demultiplexing is shown here that uh, packets are coming this corresponds to ip address okay and then it has got to go to appropriate application right so we are doing demultiplexing here in the sense that with if port number is corresponding to the application running here it will go here to this one suppose you are using two browsers then this browser also using uh, you know some port so they, it has got to go to this particular uh, app and so on okay this is a mail so this will use different port 
So the packet that is incoming will clearly define what is the port here, destination port. Okay. Now where is it? It's not part of IP. It means that now this port number, etc., have got to be part of higher level protocol. So if this is IP packet, inside this will be TCP packet or UDP packet. And then this will also have a header. And this header will define where this packet will go to, right? So this is uh, demultiplexing and this is a multiplexing, right? It is simple. Okay. <clears throat> so port is transport layer identifier, which is 16 bit. Okay. So packet carries both source and destination port numbers. Okay. And this helps us to di differentiate where the packets will go to, right? Or all right. Now, what are these port numbers? You create a new application. Then there are port numbers which are available, freely usable, right? And if nobody is using it, then you will be assigned that port number and then you can use it. Okay. And on the other hand, there has got to be some port numbers which everyone wants to talk to. Say, for example, uh, HTTP. Anyway, you, you, you are running a browser and is doing HTTP with server. Then this server, this HTTP program in server is running at port 80. So some of these ports are well known and don't change. So it's a well defined by IETF or somebody. Okay. All right. So these points we have already seen. Already discussed. So there are well known ports like 0 to 1023. These are well defined by you know, organization like uh, SSH is 22, HTTP is 80, ECO is 554, Telnet is 587, and so on. There are many you can see in the list. I have uh, there's a list given at the end of this PPT. Okay. All right. Uh, so, services can listen on this well known like HTTP corresponding to this port 80. You can run HTTP process, which will listen to incoming packets. And then there are other ports between 1024 to 65535. Okay, which you can which can be given to client processes. Okay. So a set of if you look at this set, some are reserved, some are unreserved. Okay, which can unreserved, which can be used by any process. And now within reserved, you'll find various categories. Some are for TCP, some are for UDP, some are common. Okay, all right. So you can look at details if you're interested. Okay, in order to identify destination, we need IP address and port. Okay, first IP address says that which machine it has got to go to and port says which of the process it has got to go to. Like, you know, you have to give home address and particular person's name. Okay. So now this combination of these two IP address and port, which is complete address in some sense, is defined as socket address. Okay, all right. So so connection is between whether it's tcp or udp is between a pair of sockets right so this is the ip address of this machine and this is the port number 3470 so there's a process that's running 34 at port 3470 so it could be any process is communicating with maybe a one one uh, browser okay is communicating with http server which is at ip address server's IP address is this one and the port is 80, all right? Okay, so this we have already seen. So, so now TCP, UDP, both will have source port number and destination port number, okay? In their 
in their payload in their packet right so this tcp packet or udp packet will have header and there will be one two fields corresponding source port and destination port okay and this will go inside ip packet right so this becomes part of ip packet and ip header will come here all right this we have already discussed right so this is another <clears throat> just pictorially it says that right so for if every application that's running will have unique port otherwise data cannot go there right so we say that the browser this browser has port p1 this one email uh, application has port p2 this browser this host one this host two and this host three and we can say that you know we can define different ports for this right like p1 p2 p3 and so on so, so each one is connected to a port okay all right through network and network is common and each packet will have of course uh, unique ip address and port number right so you can have one to one application one to one connection right from for example this particular browser is communicating with one here okay uh, similarly, uh, this email app is communicating with the app server here, but there can be one to many also, right? Because HTTP server may be serving to many requests because the server. So many client applications may connect to the same server, right? Okay. All right. So this is another view. So we, uh, when a process, client process wants to communicate something, it creates a socket. It will have source port and destination port. It creates a pack. So when it gives it to TCP, TCP will, uh, pack will have a source port number and destination port number. Of course, then it gives to IP, then IP will add uh, corresponding IP address of destination, IP address of source and other fields, right? Okay, all right. Please uh, read about socket and socket programming if you have not learned it, okay? so. Types of sockets, sockets we have seen uh, is basically API or interface. So application uses socket and the socket internally is uses TCP or UDP. Okay, so there has got to be two types of socket. One is corresponding to TCP, which is called sock stream. Another is corresponding to UDP. So this is for UDP and this is for TCP. Now, TCP, of course, is reliable delivery. UDP is for unreliable delivery. TCP guarantees the packets are delivered in order. Although IP layer does not guarantee, but TCP guarantees this. UDP does not guarantee that packets will be delivered in order. Uh, TCP is connection oriented. UDP is not connection oriented. When we say connection oriented, it means that both ends have some state machine corresponding to a connection, right? For example, you are doing streaming of packets, right? You have switched on Netflix and doing a streaming for, for a certain period of time, okay? This, all the packets will corresponding to a connection or a stream, okay, right? So the both end must know that packets have come or not come and then many other things, right? Who is communicating and so on, right? So all these things have got to be known and the state of the connection is stored, okay? Uh, TCP is bidirectional in the sense that when we create connection between two, the packets will go from one end to another and will also come back, okay? While UDP, it can send or receive. It doesn't care, you know, whether, you know, receiver may just receive or if it has to respond back it may send udp packet but not necessary okay but tcp has to be bidirectional means that the packet comes here this side there has to be something some information will go right whether i have received packet or reduce the flow and so on and so forth right okay 
now uh, so now we have discussed about uh, multiplexing demultiplexing and uh, sockets right now we'll come to tcp and udp primarily tcp right so when ip is communication between machine one machine to another machine okay and transport layer cares about the processes is between communication between one process to other process all right so because of addition of port number we can identify process all right okay okay so both provide end to end services for app layer okay all right So now application normally don't think in terms of packets. Okay, application says that I have a byte stream, a stream of bytes, right? For example, your movie, and it has to be communicated. For application, is just sequence of bytes, and other end should receive it and play. Or it, application may think of I have a file to send, say file one to send. That's it, right? This, this, this is the way application will think. But now there has got to be some layer that will convert that white stream into packets, fill into the packets, right? And then, and then do further processing on top of that. All right. So for that we have these layers, right? Okay. Now, if you want reliability, then we will uh, just a minute. Okay. Okay, all right. If you want reliability, because some applications want reliability, some applications don't care about reliability, right? If the packets are dropped, just it doesn't matter, right? Just leave it. So now it may care for corruption if that somebody has changed the data or it got changed by some error on the way all right or if there is overloading you know sender is sending at very high rate and receiver is not able to receive okay or in between routers are not able to receive properly okay all these things have got to be taken care of by some of some this this transport layer application whether it's okay is generally taken reliability part is taken care of by tcp okay all right so all these things are done using something or other some mechanism for example byte streams uh, are converted into packets and then reliability is achieved by what reliability is achieved by sending acknowledgements that i have received the packet okay now overloading in the receiver is achieved by limiting the data in buffer right if somebody is sending it very fast pace, then we'll say, okay, hold on. I cannot do it, right? Okay, for example, you know, you would have seen laborers, you know, when they work on the field, they throw one brick and other guy catches the brick, right? So if the guy is throwing at very fast rate, the receiver is not able to receive, then they synchronize, right? Similarly here, sender and receiver, they don't know each other. You know, when you're sending your packets to Netflix, do you know each other? You don't know. You have never seen them, right? But there must be some mechanism that your uh, if if uh, you know the if server is able to send is sending at very fast pace and you are not able to receive, then you can message it that I am not able to receive, right? So please reduce the rate. Okay, that's called flow control. So TCP has mechanism for flow control, right? And similarly, if in between routers are congested, then there must be a way of controlling that. And if if single bit error happens in the packet, right? TCP part, this is TCP or UDP part, their single bit error can should be detected. Now, why this assumption? Single bit error. So there is checksum to find out if there is single bit is flipped. Uh, it could the reason is that normally, you know, error rates are very low nowadays. Okay. 
So because quality of uh, networking has improved over time, so single bit is generally good enough to find out because of some error on the way, right? Single bit is flipped. So now basically transport layer provides a logical connection between two entities from one app to another app. One application to other application, it provides a way. Application don't care about what kind of network you're using, whether you are using Ethernet or whatever. Okay, you are using, so it just wants its bits to reach the other end. Okay, so now what sender will do? Sender will look at the data from app and break into segments. Okay, form TCP lay packet, put the segments into TCP payload or UDP payload and give it to IP. Okay, all right. So we have TCP, which is reliable, congestion, it does congestion control, flow control, connection setup, and UDP, which is just unreliable on order delivery, right? It's a no frill, batch suffered IP. Okay. Only thing it does is multiplexing, uses port. Multiplexing and demultiplexing, basically use of ports. That's it. Okay, but both of them don't guarantee delays or bandwidth. You know, the, nobody says that how whether you are streaming it from Netflix or whatever, it does not guarantee that packet will reach you in say uh, 10 milliseconds. Okay, now it is responsibility of those service provider to make sure that packets don't take too much time. Otherwise, you will not watch IPL on 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 OTT. You will watch it on maybe TV. Okay. The reason for that, for that, they they have normally servers now very close to your home somewhere. You know, in Bangalore, for example, uh, Netflix may have a server. Okay, all right. So let's come to TCP. Basically, internet is unreliable, and if you want reliability between two end, you will have to no other way but use TCP. Okay. Now we are solving here many problems. So because IP packets have limited size, IP packets have limited size, right? And what you are getting is stream of bits. Okay. So now what the TCP has got to do is that it has to split the bits, set of bits, and put this into TCP payload part. Okay, attach header and send it to our IP. That it does, right? What happens is packets arrive out of order. The IP packets may take different route, arrive out of order. It has to somehow reassemble them back. How can it reassemble them back? Like, you know, many of you are going from IIT Mandi campus, command to a city and you are in a restaurant and then the restaurant guy says that, you know, you have to come in order, well, first, second, third. So you guys have some slip, one, two, three, or whatever, and you take different route, reach out of order, but you have numbering. The guy at the other end will reassemble you, will will say that, okay, first guy first, second guy second, third guy third, and so on, so forth, right? whatever path you have taken on the way, but at the end, corresponding TCP will put everything back in order. What happens is somebody is lost on the way, a packet is dropped on the way, the receiver will know that something is dropped, right? So it will not send X for that. Okay. It will keep sending X for previously received packet, like one, two, three, four, four guys are there. Okay. And then first guy has come, second guy has come, fourth guy has also come, but third has not come. Then this hotel guy will say, okay, I have received up to two. Okay. Now receiver uh, sender will then send three back. Okay, something like this. Okay, all right. So it does byte stream abstraction that we have already discussed. So bytes you receive nothing but application things all me in terms of bytes. Stream of byte like you know your water in a pipe. It has no boundary, right? I mean you continuously uh, uh, water will flow in, right? Similarly, stream of bits will continue to come here in the pipe. Okay, at the other end, same thing we should be received. Similarly, stream of bits are coming, you'll have to just pack them into packet. 
okay so these points we have already discussed it provides ordering it provides reliability by sending acknowledgement it will explicitly send x okay all right so these are point to point it means a tcp connection exists between two endpoints sender and receiver okay it will not happen between one sender and multiple receivers it doesn't okay so many of you are watching netflix or nowadays you are doing geo cinema for ipl do you think that same packet is being uh, if we, two of you are sitting close to each other same packet is forking out and going to both of your machines no okay in this world ott world there is a one to one connection from your machine to other end okay the individual connection okay full duplex data means that data travels in both way that we have seen cumulative act you have received you know segment one two three in line then you will say segment you will say that three is received i am expecting four it means that one two has already been received okay like you know when when you are going to a restaurant with your numbers one two three four the packet is a person number one to arrives that the hotel guy will say that two is uh, up to two is received i am expecting three so it's a cumulative act pipelining it means that you know when all of you are going then it's not that understanding is not that first guy will go and reach there only then then this will send the act for first only then second packet will go or second person will go okay so in pipelining one after other person can follow each other right so one packet after other will flow on the way okay and then packets are received at the other end and then acknowledgement is sent back connection oriented is essentially handshaking between two ends so they, they must be managing some state machine this flow control is that your know, receiver will say yeah slow down slow down i cannot handle it at, you are sending at very fast pace just slow down okay so so some way of controlling the flow of packets or number of packets right okay applications are most of the applications today that you use use tcp now this is one there are two protocols in that this in a communication world not necessarily in tcp is a stop and wait and pipeline stop and wait, wait is something that first packet goes from one end to another and when it is received properly then it will send back only then second packet will travel while in pipeline one sender will send packets after packets right because this path or link can carry multiple packets one after the other depending on the bandwidth of the pipeline right and similarly x can come this way right well, first packet received x will come then second packet is x may come and so on and so forth or cumulative x can also come. so tcp uses this pipeline way of communication okay and then we have principle of it so what okay this point we already discussed whatever is happening in ip it tcp provides reliable communication so this application have not got to worry about problems of ip it, or ip network right it says it assumes the moment the application is using services of tcp it will know that is data will be delivered properly to other end reliably to other end right okay however what happens is that sender doesn't know about receiver right okay they, they you know uh, yet it means that there is you don't know where the netflix server is right but you have understanding you have you are using the same protocol so you can still you know you have to just follow your protocol and then the level packet transfer can happen okay? all right so now we have byte stream abstraction wherein sending process just sent by bytes system of bytes and other end receives them this is the 
this is what application think. It's like, you know, you're putting water at one end, it comes out the other end. This is, instead of water, you have stream of bits. In the same order, it comes out. Okay. So internally, what we have, we have a buffer, and then we keep filling bits here, and then keep sending them in, create, take some of these bits, uh, put them into TCP, they will come here in TCP and put header, TCP header like port number, etc. And this will go over IP. Okay, and we'll reach to other end. And the other end will take this out and fill that in buffer. And then receiving process can read it. Any question up to this point? Okay. Are you able to follow it? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is another abstraction. So I've given a lot of pictures so that you understand properly. This app at one end is sending it. It does it. It only outputs stream of bytes. So it's just sending these bytes in this order. It goes to TCP layer. TCP puts this. Take some of these that we call a segment. Put this inside, put this segment into CP packet, put a header, okay, and then this header goes as a payload of IP packet. Okay. All right. So sorry, this IP IP protocol, and then this will go inside IP packet. So this is the TCP packet, goes inside IP. So IP will also header. This goes to other end. IP protocol will handle it. Okay, take the TCP packet out and give it to tcp layer and tcp layer will uh, look at the port number etc and give it to port number correspond to this uh, this particular application uh, and then pass it on as a byte stream to this application right so bytes here are received as a byte at the other end internally it goes over tcp packets and tcp go inside ip and ip of course goes inside layer 2 which is uh, maybe ethernet or whatever Okay, so and application will see a stream of bytes like here byte 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. This is a time t0 and so on, and it will be received after some time in the same order at the other end. Okay, but in order to achieve this, what we are going to do is that take some bytes from here, say for example, byte 0 to byte 80, put this into TCP data part, and uh, on. And of course, there will be header, etc., etc., which I am skipping it now. And then it will receive it at the other end. And then again, byte stream is created. Okay. So what we see is that this is IP packet, and this is the actual application data for byte streams, right? We call it segment. Add to segment TCP header. Put this in, then when it goes to lower level, then IP packet is created and IP header is added to that, right? And there are various terminologies associated with um, <clears throat> IP can handle up to some length, right? Which is called MTU, maximum transmission unit. Okay. Uh, now, of course, how much IP can handle also depends on how much Ethernet packet can handle. For example, 1500 bytes is the maximum for Ethernet. Okay. So now from this, we can find out, you know, what is the TCP segment size in general, right? Okay. So TCP segment size is called maximum segment size, no more than. So we from this, we define what is the maximum segment size then TCP can handle. Okay. Which is generally maximum MTU, maximum transmission unit for IP minus ip header minus tcp header okay all right okay don't just just go through it once and you will know simple right so basically whatever be a byte stream here it will go as part of segments will reach to other end and they will reassemble back and we get the data back or stream back right so tcp packet looks something like this it has source port number, destination port number, corresponding processes, then sequence number. If you don't have sequence number, then we cannot reassemble the packet, right? 
okay if they out go out of steam etc out of order then you cannot put these packets uh, one after the right now here the sequence number does not belong to the ip packet number or tcp packet number it belongs to it basically shows a byte uh number we'll we'll look at that later right okay ack is uh, when you the sender send something receiver receives it then it has to ack it right or acknowledgement okay now the field here gives the acknowledgement number what up to what byte it has received and this number is valid if this flag is valid right if this flag is set to one only then this number is valid okay this is application data it means that your byte stream will come here okay all right then of course there is a checksum to find out if one of these byte uh, one of the bit is flipped okay all right uh, and then we have length header length field because the header length could be variable okay and then we have receive window basically this is receive this is required for flow control so receiver will say how much how many bytes i can receive okay this is called receiving window now if sender is sending at very fast rate then we'll say then receiver will uh, put a number here that this this is going to my receive window and based on that sender will control the flow okay apart from that there are some flags which is called r s and f r correspond to rst it means that if if tcp connection that is created end to end is to be reset by either parties okay or terminated immediately then this flag is set it means that now this tcp packet will is indicating that now after this i will not this connection is over okay sin is required for setting up the connection fin is actually is again for transmission but is more and shake way you know i mean in the sense that you know both ends will agree on termination of connection well rst is simply when either party sends it means that okay i am just breaking it up because of something all right so these are the fields of tcp okay so in general we can say now any connection is defined by source ip address destination ip address source port number destination port number and because all these can be tcp or udp we we'll have to say whether it's a tcp or udp so now you say tcp with source ip destination ip source port and destination port this defines complete connection okay all right okay any question up to this point okay all right so let's stop here okay and then we'll look at how what the sequence numbers are okay and how tcp works on this sequence number something on initial sequence number is there to avoid some kind of uh, attacks okay and uh, how the sequence number will be used okay so we'll look at some of these concepts in the next class and then we'll study uh, you know what kind of threats tcp can have all right now note that this protocol is not easy to understand right so what we have done so for discuss is very simple concepts okay uh, so i will take one more class to discuss tcp okay and then i need one class for tcp vulnerability one class then for uh, you know reliable uh, protocol uh, okay tls protocol and then two classes for uh, crypto 
if you are interested in knowing crypto and blockchain so i need two extra hours from you if you are interested in learning these topics if you are not i am fine with you know completing whatever i can okay because we have lost uh, possibly one lecture in between because we had one mid sem exam i think on the first quiz on uh, regular class day so ideally we should have 42 lectures you come we'll be completing 41 plus 2 extra lectures i need okay who can tell me the ex when we can have extra classes or you don't have time for it sir actually for the end uh, while floating for the ancient slot i floated the form but actually uh...